So it's a pleasure uh, for me to introduce our next, next speaker this morning. Uh, she's uh, Irma Galvez from uh, Barcelona, and she's going to talk about objective combinatorial bialgebras through the composition uh, spaces. Oh, Thank so you. I got, I, I've been told by my advisor that I closed the version with, sorry, wait a second. Uh, That's not the right file. I think that the right file is this other one. Yes. Right, okay, this is the one with the, right. Okay, sorry about that. So, um, well, it is very difficult to give a talk after EK is a big honor that can never be fulfilled appropriately. So, sorry about that. I'm very happy to be invited to talk in Carla's Casa Cuberta's day. I don't say the number of the birthday because um, I don't think that <laughs> this is elegant, uh, but I'm only going to say that I've, I've known Carlos for more than a quarter of a century uh, and that uh, I want to underline uh, his role. Uh, he can the, under, underline his role in, in the European mathematical community. I want to underline his role in the Catalonian and in the Spanish mathematical communities. I think that it has been paramount and it's still paramount. And I think that uh, without people like him, it could have been much more difficult to keep such communities open to new ideas with the limitations that we uh, endure. Okay. So also, uh, I'm less happy to say that I am the only one of Carlos male students which, which are still in academia, but I'm also happy to say, or I don't know, that I am the only one who has given him mathematical descendants. Once that said, I'm going to tell you about uh, my ongoing work with, uh, is, is actually work in progress, I should have written that, with Joachim Koch and, and the tongues uh, on objective combinatorial by algebra through the composition spaces. And uh, this is ongoing work which has suffered badly from the, from the COVID uh, restrictions. So it has been stopped for, for a long time or uh, we, so we, we have been working for that uh, a long time ago and then the, uh, we have not been able to go as quick as we wanted. The prehistory goes actually back to what I was thinking about when I began to do my master's thesis with Carlos. I was computing characteristic classes uh, in order to compute uh, uh, genera, like kind of a little genera. And then I was very curious about all the things that happens with the rings of uh, symmetric functions. Uh, there are many, many uh, rings. Uh, I mean, there are many, many uh, properties of the, this ring of symmetric functions that uh, I found very interesting. And in particular, the way in which uh, uh, the basis that you have for them uh, uh, change and uh, how you get the ones from the others. And I did a lot of these computations by hand of my time using like the, the books that were available. And uh, the formulas that you get, you have the monomial basis, the power sum basis, the elementary basis. I, I get that most of you are familiar with all these. And uh, well, uh, I've, I've here put as, a, as an example some, some of them. And uh, well, some of these bases have like easy products, like uh, this is the power sum, also called the Newton basis. This is the elementary polynomials basis. But then you have other ones that are easy to define, like the monomial basis, but uh, which don't give you like easy to like easy formulas for multiplication, right? Also, at the about at the same time, or maybe earlier, because the first thing we were hunted with when we began our graduate studies at the time at the UAB was a copy of the uh, of the paper of the Miller Moore paper about half algebras. Uh, we learned about half algebras, and uh, but we we, no, we did not have the the symmetric functions in our focus at the time. 
but uh, we know as well that there is a canonical, there are other, but there is a canonical structure of a Hoff algebra on symmetric functions, uh, which uh, give us uh, like uh, uh, this effect of uh, like uh, on the elementary basis, this one on the example of the monomial basis and this on on this example of the of the powers and basis which uh, has narrators who happen to be group like for that so well uh, the the this prehistory uh, um, uh, after after having used these functions for for many years in many contexts uh, is going to come back at the end of the talk and because we, we are we are trying to do is to give like a general way of looking at that from the point of view of uh, homotopical linear algebra. Now for that, uh, we are going back to our common goal with uh, Andy and Joachim on the, the composition of spaces also more, no, more famous maybe as to single spaces, although for when we use them like for combinatorial purposes, we use the composition spaces because people in combinatorics may not be that familiar with the with the uh, two single space uh, notation, right? So let me remind you that uh, a decomposition space is a simplicial infinity groupoid, which happens to have the following property: it sends active inner pushouts in the simplicial category to multiple pullbacks in. Uh, infinity group points. This is our symbol for that category, right? So, so that when you, whenever you have such a push out, uh, you get it sent to a homotopy what right? Let me remind you that using uh, Jacob Lurie's notation, uh, what we mean by inert is distance preserving maps in delta, like this one, for instance, right? And what we mean by active is in endpoint preserving maps in delta like the one in here, for instance, right? So uh, whenever we have a, a map in this category, uh, then uh, we, whenever we obtain a joint factors between the corresponding size categories, this push for war here and this, uh, mm, well, I mean, this is the post composition this the, and this is the post for war. This notation always I, I find uh, uh, confusing, right? Uh, because in other contexts is the opposite. So then this is to be understood in a in a in the in a number of topic sense. So then uh, when a span given by two maps P and Q uh, is given, then what we obtain is what is called a linear factor in the in the sense of Joachim Koch and other, uh, which uh, uh, consists in composing first the homotopy pullback and then the post composition so that we go from this slice over i to the slice over j. Right. In this way, uh, we get lean as the monoidal infinity category whose objects are these slices of uh, sigma over i and the more are the linear factors that we just described and which is also a tensor because it inherits the Cartesian tensor product on points. Then uh, we can look at these slices at generalized vector spaces with some specified basis given by the connected components of the basis. And uh, so that uh, whenever we are given x over b, we can look at that as an homotopy linear combination uh, we use here this integration sign, right? But we could also use something like a sum. And here we are like taking over each of these maps that we call the name of B, small b, and adding over this small b, and this small b belonging to the connected components of the big b. And then what the important theorem in the composition species says is that if you take this span in the simplicial category given by uh, these three cofaces, then uh, we get the 
span that give us the structure of a co-algebra object in this category lean. And or also we can read it backwards and, and read the span backwards and say that we get a structure of an algebra uh, from group of over x1, tensor group of over x1 to group of over x1, right? Now, uh, we are going to move on. Uh, okay, so what I don't know is the exact time at which I began because I haven't checked. Javier, can you tell me? Javier, can you tell me at what time? I, uh, you have until 10 past or, or 12 past, something like this. Okay. Okay, so Andy, please let me know when I have 10 minutes left. So then, uh, now we are going to say something about bialgebras and half algebras, right? Uh, we want to consider examples of uh, bialgebras and half algebras uh, uh, of this form, uh, group point, uh, infinity group points over B in the objective language of the composition spaces. So to, what's to define the coalgebra part? Well, we have to define uh, the composition space. Uh, uh, that means a uh, uh, a uh, simplicial space uh, fulfilling the, the conditions about active and inner mouse that we said before, right? So that's going to be given by 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 its cofaces and its cogenesis. Uh, and then uh, if we name the the x1 uh, uh, component of it by p, then uh, this is going to play for us the, the role of an specified linear basis for this coalgebra. We have seen that in the in the in the corresponding spans, right? So this is the span that gives us the coalgebra structures. This one I didn't say, but this one is the one that gives us the co-unit of the coalgebra part, right? With this uh, this And to get the algebra part, then uh, we get uh, this other one. Right, so we are like uh, getting the same thing going uh, in the other direction. But we have here two different things, right? Like the x two a and the x two c. So how can you read that in the discrete case? Well, in the discrete case, you just take something next one, then you apply the uh, post of bar. And then, uh, like the, and then you apply the post composition, right? That's how you do for the uh, coalgebra. And if you perform the operations in the other order, then you begin with a pair in B times B. And then uh, what you do is uh, you look at the simplices in the X2 of A that are uh, the premises of, 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 of those uh, pairs by the D2. Uh, bar and the d zero bar, and then you apply the d one bar to this to simplices, and you add over them. Right? If it is this case, it has no problem. I'm just giving like enough formula for this case because it's easy to see, right? Okay, so co-associativity follows associative and associativity as well follow from the composition spaces actions about inert and active map that we said at the beginning which are encoded in diagrams of the type of these ones that we put here as examples, right? There are more of them, right? So that you get uh, uh, the, the composition spaces. But uh, the important thing is the compatibility of the algebra and coalgebra structures. This requires the simplicial object that we denote by these two indices that we construct by taking Cartesian product of the algebra, the composition space, and the coalgebra composition space over the base, which is, remember, the common x1, c, x, a, c. And uh, this is uh, something that has to satisfy the penny actions, uh, established by Mark Penny, which are uh, of this form, right? We need uh, to get uh, these uh, diagrams to be polar. Now, um, well, 
uh, checking all this, of course, is not easy. Sorry. Now, now we come to something which is a, an important point in our in our project, but that is still not completely developed, which is the question about duality. So, uh, the first uh, approach to duality is to say that the law of algebra uh, is the one that you get with multiplication and co-multiplication expands, expands exchange. And it is defined by the transpose of the bisimplicial object, right? This is very reasonable. And actually, what is amazing is that it works on the nose to give you a lot more dualities than you would expect. I don't want to have time to explain that all today because I we haven't checked finishing all the all the details, but uh, it gives you back um, like uh, in many examples duality of graded of algebras in the classical combinatorial sense that you in principle were not entitled to expect, right? And I think that this is very interesting, right? So then I'm going to establish some combinatorial notational language that I'm going to use in what I'm going to do now, which is just to explain some of the examples that we are working on. So, uh, well, we are going to use the K underline for the standard linearly order finite set. And uh, we are going to use a lot of cospans of posted monomorphisms, which are going to be denoted like that, with these arrows with this kind of angle, right? And the uh, minus equal sign. Now, uh, whenever when taking the digital union, which gives us a monoidal structure in here, uh, uh, we get uh, of two of, of those maps, uh, we get a map into another. Okay, uh, which is by jective, we are going to say that we have a shuffle that is your usual shuffle, right? You have the cosy shuffle, which has other names as well. If this join map happens to be not a bijection but is onto, and also, well, what you call the ordinal sum is just also what you could call the identity shuffle right is like the one in which the first map is just the inclusion of the first component and then the addition of the second component with the corresponding chip now uh, you can think of shuffles as just order partitions of k into two parts so you can equally encode those in maps from uh, the k underline to the two underline namely part partitioning K into the two fibers. And then all the partitions into K non empty parts are just sorry, actions from an underline to K underline. Now we are also going to use monotonic surjections, which are we are going to denote if we denote surjections by the this onto sign on the on the arrow, we are going to denote monotonic surjections by the uh, same sign, but with the minus equal above. And then here we are going to ask also as well that uh, these n i's here are the cardinalities of each of the i's in the target k and the bar, uh, but uh, order, right? So then uh, classical numerical partitions, then uh, we are going to uh, consider as isomorphous classes of surjections of unordered sets. Now, uh, there we are going to consider that these ends are ordered in, uh, decre in decreasing in the decreasing way. You know that in particular as well, you can have a positive structure, for instance, uh, by the given by the Ferrer's uh, diagrams, right? Okay. So now we are going to begin with our basic example of an objective of algebra in our category line. So for any finite set S, we consider the collection of all linear orders on S. This is what is called a restriction of species. A restriction of species is given by some factor uh, from the category uh, um, black ball I up 
to in our case is uh, like to group points or to infinity group points or but you can just say to uh, group points uh, that uh, uh, this category is like the category of finances and injections right and uh, and it it is a species in the sense of real but uh, in which subsets inherit uh, structures right and uh, then we had uh, in one of our papers we have uh, uh, proof that out of those uh, we can construct uh, uh, the composition space in all cases right and the way in which we do that is that we consider our our base uh, what's uh, one a for the algebra or also for the for the co-algebra uh, given by the discrete group point of the linear orderings of this set s And then uh, we put layers, right? Uh, this N is the cardinality of our subset because it's of, uh, of our set, sorry, because it, it's a set, a finite set. And then, uh, well, uh, this has layers, right? And these layers are given by mass from N to R, right? And for each R, we get uh, uh, here, this one is like the first one is like you, we can always have them up to one, right? Then uh, interfaces are just given by combining different layers, something that you can always do. The bottom and the top layers is just forget that layer, and the degeneracy maps uh, insert empty layers, which is something that you can always do. Then, uh, because we are in this very discrete world, we can identify each of the XRIAs with the very set of its connected components, right? And this is what we call uh, the uh, set uh, of the N to R uh, L shafts, right? Now, uh, if the S is order, now we can just consider the single term of linear orders on S, right? And then we could as well consider what we call convex subsets which is what gives uh, us a uh, related but um, different no notion that we also explain in that paper, which is that of directed restriction species. And we can also consider the corresponding uh, decomposition space. Now we are talking here like for the quadrature, right? That's also discrete, right? We can also uh, put like uh, just the set of uh, s well ordinal sums, right? Here, we denote this with this uh, minus equal sign, okay? And here we put T for uh, the, the quality of type. And now we can put together these two things and this gets us a very simple shell set. This, well, I mean, all this of course needs to be, <laughs> needs to be, um, Made, I mean, we need to now to, to show the compatibility of all this to, 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 to show that this is a course of algebra, right? Well, this is actually what you find in the um, traditional, very traditional sh shuffle of algebra by Ellen Baron McLean in the 50s. And well, I mean, there are many occurrences of this and some predate this, right? Uh, we, we can uh, actually decorate this uh, previous example with some alphabet A. For instance, uh, we define here B to be the shuffle one one and to A to be the set of words in A for N bigger or equal than zero to zero, right? Here we have, for instance, this per mole signs, right? Which is something going from 15 to A, right? As an example. Now, similarly, uh, we can define the rest of the uh, by simplicial structure, by putting the uh, shuffle uh, S, decorating the X uh, S above with this particular alphabet A, right? So that we consider the spans above, right? And also with a map from N to A. So it's like a change of alphabet from the natural numbers to whatever alphabet you fancy, right? And this is the way in which the by simplicial set encodes the shuffle of algebra, right? So the shuffle product is the blue one that you find encoded here. For the shuffle product, we use the rational letter sh. And then uh, 
here you see how it acts. You all know how the shuffle product acts, right? You know many realizations of it that we don't have time to comment. And uh, then in this case, the, uh, the quadruple structure is just given by the concatenation control, okay? So this is easy. It is interesting that some of the most interesting examples are actually to be seen as endomorphies of this one, but we don't have time to go into this. Okay, so why do these, uh, these uh, shuffles with alphabets or without it uh, define who algebras? Well, uh, the co-associativity and the associativity of the shuffle and con the concatenation co-algebra structures uh, follow from our formal theory, as I said, of restriction species, the restriction species, right? So that we had already proved as soon as we have proved that those are restriction species and director restriction species, which is not that difficult, right? The compatibility of the shuffle algebra with the, concaten with the deconcatenation algebra is something that needs to be done by, well, by now it's supposed to be a standard penny argument, right? In the sense that we need to prove that that pole buff we had in one of the former slides actually uh, is, is one. So to do that, you need actually to show that elements which are pair of ordinal sums living in the X12 of our bisimplicial construction together with pairs of shuffles uh, living in the X to one of our bisimplicial uh, construction. I've, I've indicated them in different colors and with um, signs to indicate their operations. Then, uh, well, uh, they they pack together nicely and to say to to prove this what you need to to use is is the argument which says that specifying a box of this form here is the same as specifying a, a cross of this form here right and specifying a box of this cross of sorry a, a box of this form here is the same as uh, getting uh, something well, it's, it's a bit like something like getting a map uh, here from k to two, here a map from here to two, but uh, um, and then uh, in such a way that this pole back in here can be naturally identified with the x to two in your by simplicial structure. Okay, so. Somehow this is the uh, key of the of the of the argument, right? It works like that in this case, and it works similarly in other cases, right? Okay, so now I'm going to comment on some further classical combinatorial Hof algebras and uh, how you see them in this, uh, in this framework, at least part of their structure. Let us go first for uh, what is called uh, the Malvenuto Reutenauer or also Malvenuto Reutenauer Poirier Hof algebra of uh, permutation of also free quasi-symmetric uh, functions. Right. Also, we are going to comment on the Hof algebra of non-commutative symmetric functions, which is also has goes by other names. Uh, uh, for instance, Solomon's descent algebra. Then uh, the Hof algebra uh, uh, of quasi-symmetric functions, which is uh, uh, known to be dual in a very precise sense uh, to the uh, one above. Also the uh, algebra of uh, work quasi symmetric function, which uh, is, uh, well, also going to uh, give a, a small mention of that. And finally, I'm going to devote some more time uh, to uh, some aspect of the very Hof algebra uh, of symmetric functions with some of its bases, in particular, the power sum, the monomial and the elementary symmetric function bases that were present at the beginning, at the slide at the beginning of the talk. 
right? So how to begin the transaction to composition spaces? Well, in a similar way uh, as we did for for the for the basic example, right? Uh, basic sets are always certain maps, like uh, in principle from uh, an underbar to k underbar as before, right? And we put sets like for x2 for the co-algebra, x2 for the algebra, being x1, 2, x2, 1, and given by certain co-spans, sigma between such maps, right? And the model co-span is something of this form. Here you get like, I mean, here you, well, uh, it's like uh, order maps. And here you get that the map here from, uh, here is the D1 of something, which is P. Here is D0 of the same something, which is the P second. And here you got the D2 of the same something, which is the P prime, right? So you may see what is coming, right? From here, you can read co-algebra and algebra structures. Uh, uh, in the discrete case, uh, you can write them as a sum like that the delta just the adding over all such sigmas in such x to c's, right? Which give you this decomposition into p prime, p second, as in here at the both left and right hand side of the diagram, right? Also, uh, adding over the sigmas, not in the, not in the x to c, but in the x to a, then you get uh, that uh, if you multiply this piece by this piece and define this multiplication as the adding over uh, in this uh, using your here using monoidal structure on the uh, on the basis, then for the intermediate p that you get here, then you get the algebra structure. Okay. So this is the basic, uh, the basic way in which you obtain the uh, co-algebra and the algebra structures out of the uh, out of the basic maps. Right. So let us see how this works in some uh, examples. Right. Now, what makes really different working with the composition spaces from working in the algebraic or in the combinatorial work in general, is the fact that here the basis matter, right? Namely, when we define the space, we are actually picking up the basis and then this basis is given by the maps. So uh, then uh, in the construction of the space, the maps are paramount, right? So we are going to see that in the, in the examples, right? So these, uh, this uh, FQC, which is the algebra of frequency symmetric functions, uh, well, what is that uh, called so? Uh, that's what you get if you consider like words on an, on an, on a, on an associative al alphabet and then you add over, uh, like uh, to multiply those which, uh, I mean, your representatives are the ones uh, who standardize uh, to, to the same, to the same, Mm, permutation, right? So taking your permutations as the as uh, the your, your the natural numbers are your basic alphabet, and then um, uh, in this way you generalize the non-commutative world the concept of the symmetric quasi symmetric functions in the in the commutative world that we are going to see next, right? But uh, the more natural way of looking at the algebra of permutations uh, is actually uh, the one described by Claudia Malvento in her, in her thesis, right? So then uh, here, uh, what we have is uh, per, the basis indexed by permutations or by actions, right? So these by actions, we are going to take them as uh, indexing what's called the fundamental basis. Now, what are the corresponds that give us the basis? So for the algebra, the cospans are these ones that I've uh, um, represented here. Uh, 
in the upper row I have like the shuffle product as we had before and uh, below is the uh, ordinal sum right okay so that's how the uh, product uh, works and well I mean we don't have time to check them them all but uh, you can match uh, the diagrams with the formulas uh, not in not a very difficult way also what's very nice about this one is that when you consider the the coalgebra associated to that is that on the top you get the ordinal sum and on the bottom you get the uh, shuffle right now it is very well known that for this uh, well okay so in this case that's how it works for the coproduct right but it is well known that it's just one of the uh, mm, two very well known structures that you can use to put a half algebra structure on this algebra that may be like the first structure there is also a second structure the second structure which is obtained by mapping a permutation to its inverse actually defines an isomorphism of the dual half algebra just by exchanging the rows right now this well this is i think uh, if i'm not wrong this is an uh, automorphism for the algebra and anti automorphism for the coalgebra right and it switches the uh, product uh, the so that it, it gets like the the um, concatenation product and the deshuffling uh, coproduct as the structure on the Hof algebra right so we recover the well-known duality in the Hof algebra of permutations Malvin to Reutenauer, which is actually a, a duality as created Hof algebras, which also goes down to one of the versions of uh, the um, Hof algebra or, or maybe the Bay algebra of rooted uh, forest, right? Level rooted forest. That is uh, also one of our main examples for the composition spaces. And this has been studied by, by Aguiar and his collaborator, and it is in a hierarchy of uh, Galois connections between uh, combinatorial half algebras, which also is very interesting for us to study. Okay, so here, okay, okay, so the compatibility between multiplication and commultiplication uh, is, um, is also um, to be seen looking at the variation between uh, two cross diagrams uh, that contain the same information as variations of the two box diagrams that correspond to them, right? Notice our description of the cospans was quite redundant. If you look at one of these cospans, then you can actually get all the information, removing the two cases at the bottom here. And if you look at what is left, you can actually just look at what are the two parts that you get here, right? So it's what you have in here that at the end, these two maps, 2K and 2, 2 this one is like an order map that you need. So, <coughs> sorry, then you get for the algebra, you get map to K and to S to generalize that what you we just did with the cospans in here. And for the algebra dually, you get the same thing, but with consecutive maps here, right? You can see that you have a span, but here you have consecutive maps, okay? That we will pick up later. Now, uh, those combining this by simplicial set, so that you have here this span and you have here this composition, okay? Right, so this is kind of a basic example in the sense that it's well, uh, mm, uh, basic, I would call it basic non commutative example, right? So I will go over quickly over the other cases before symmetric function. So if instead of taking uh, bijections, you take monotons or reactions, also called compositions of natural numbers, and you index them by the call so the so-called S basis, then you get also two sets of cospans, very much in the same form as before, right? And in this case, 
uh, you see that the two uh, sets of cospans that you get are not uh, dual to each other in the way that they were before. Here you get, in both cases, ordinal sound. Here you get, uh, here you get like a different kind of ordinal sound, which is ordinal sound on each fiber over K. And the bottom is what's called a quasi shuffle. I've used the, the Russian letter shish for that. Excuse me for my bad Rus Russian pronunciation, but I think that the symbol is the most appropriate for that. Right, and what is also very nice, I don't have time to elaborate on this algebra, which is also one that I like very much, but if I go to the next one, okay, you see this is the product and this is the uh, co-product, right? So if I go to the next one, then, which is QSIM, the algebra of quasi-semantic functions, that uh, this is, a in this by the same composition here, I'm introducing already what is called the monomial basis. But now, actually, I get it by reversing the roles of the two types of cuspans that I used in the other one, right? And it goes perfectly well. So that I recover the formula for multiplication of quasi-symmetric functions and coproduct of quasi-symmetric functions with respect to this structure. Okay, I'm not going to devote more time to that. Also, I could do that as well for the uh, algebra of quark quasi-symmetric functions, which is based on, on pack words. Pack words are uh, such words which contain uh, all letters in the alphabet in between of those which appear in the word, right? And uh, this, well, this can, this can be, uh, this symmetric functions in those can be defined and then, uh, you can show that it is uh, it, it holds a base that can also be called a be called a monomial basis in this by order set partitions, which are actually surjections or surjections, and that uh, also is encoded into types of uh, corresponds. Given in the case of uh, the algebra uh, again by ordinal sum on quasi shuffle but it's a different quasi shuffle because we take into account here the order, right? And uh, in the algebra here, again, we get, uh, but notice not perfect duality yet, but right? So this a shuffle and a bottom uh, ordinal sum. So, okay. So we can recover, I mean, I mean, that's just a sample. There is more things that we can recover. For instance, we can recover like, uh, the wrong cause uh, three algebra as well, right? So then uh, I'm going to devote, to devote the last five minutes to talk about the half algebra of symmetric functions in several bases, right? So, uh, well, uh, the symmetric algebra has the power sum basis elements, which is the one that is also called the Newton basis, uh, the one that you get by adding all the, um, the element in in grade P, just add all in the terminates to the power of P, right? And then you get uh, all the other elements uh, indexed by all partitions by just mm, timing them in the usual way, right? That's how you do it in, in functions. So then, uh, okay, in this case, we are using uh, components of the group of projections in sets because here, the order is not important, this order, right? Partitions lattice has all the orders that are important when you study this algebra of symmetric functions, but not the order in terms of the sets as it goes in the others, right? So then uh, we are going to consider the following group points of cospans between surjections. Now we are using this uh, sign of uh, the disjoint union of these two maps to encode the fact that this row is jointly rejective, right? So that the N1 plus N2 is N and K1 plus K2 is K below. And you see that in this case, uh, we have monomorphisms which have complementary images. This is the kind of spans that encode our, our, our operations. And this one is actually uh, the same span, the same kind of span that we use to encode the uh, co-algebra structure. So it happens as it happened with the more than our uh, algebra, but uh, now this is a commutative algebra. And 
now here we have a whole algebraic more history to Chima Mitsuar, right? Um, uh, well, uh, then you are familiar with the elementary basis in, in symmetric functions. Now, our elementary basis in symmetric functions is, you are going to see, slightly different, but uh, it's also indexed by the uh, partition transition motion scale associations, which is to say the same, right? And uh, we are considering, like here, these uh, rows. But here we are considering, not as before, the... Uh, ah, I forgot to say that the, the basis I give you before, one kind of logic goes over the rationals, but it doesn't go over the integers, right? This one I'm giving, it goes over the integers. Now, this one uh, is, a, is, a, um, is a basis uh, where here uh, the top row is jointly bijective, but uh, the bottom is only uh, jointly subjective, right? Uh, as well, SIM has a monomial basis, which is in the indexed by the same set. But in this case, you see what I'm doing, I'm switching the spans, right? So in this way, in this call, these bases are dual, right? Which is not exactly how it works in symmetric functions unless you use uh, an involution. Uh, and then uh, you can recover the product of monomial as, well, it's not exactly the same result as the beginning, and the coproduct, right? We are going to say in the last minute, I have, I think, two minutes left, uh, how we go back to the beginning. So, what we had at the beginning was precisely the case I have in this slide, right? And in this case, right, we have uh, maths over one plus one here and here. So that K can be two, three, or four. We are talking obviously in X to A. So to compute M A B times M X Y, we need to find all M P's so that we add all over the subjections that can occupy the middle position in this span. Now, which are those? Well, here they are in, in this way expressed. And in particular, in this case, what we get in our formula, we put here two, two, and two, one, is these guys. In this case, because we are not in the case of uh, where order sets matter, we can pack together some of them and we have a two here, a two here, and two here. Right. We renormalize this basis by symmetry group orders. That's what's missing in the, let's say, all symmetric functions theory, right? Uh, this symmetric group orders is like the homotopy linear algebra part of it, that we have the numbers to compute them. So that our big M is six times the old M, and this one is two times the old M, and this one is two times the old M. And so we recover the calculation for the, from the first slide. Okay? Precisely. Right? Now, we know how to change basis between M and E using uh, our group of uh, finite solutions of finite sets, whose isomorphism class, the partitions label uh, both the M and the A basis, right? And to change basis means that we have a linear factor via some span, right? And uh, this span will have in the middle some groupoid, which is this W1, which will get some diagram. Uh, this diagram will be of this form. And uh, here, what we have here is just P and Q in here, going respectively to P and to Q, right? What does this, sorry, what this, yeah, what does this is that the, the change of basis, given the E's in terms of the M's, right, has to add over all these which project to the type PQ, okay, appearing here and here. And when we have the decomposition spaces corresponding respectively to the M and to the E basis, you see that objectively they are different. This difference is what is lost in classical algebra. Well, I won't go again through how you simplify the spans. We already saw that before, right? But both are simply shell group points of layer subjections. The one is like that, the other one is like that, okay? 
and the, dif the, the corresponding linear factor uh, is given by a span of this form, and the group point is actually of the elements of the form that I've specified here. So that uh, to see that this defines a value of map, we need to check that W is a decomposition space and it's relatively single over X. I'm not going into what this condition means, that this curve over Y, which curve means a morphism in the in the in between uh, the composition spaces, right? And well, I won't tell you what I have left for future talks, right? But you see that there is a lot of stuff, right? So I'm going to stop here, but uh Better I'm going to start here, right? Right. And I'm going to uh, ask uh, everybody to excuse me for not being so good as uh, as at managing my time. I'm, I've been over time like three minutes and uh, uh, giving uh, Carlos again my best congratulations. Thank you very much to all for your attention. Thank you, uh, Tim, um, very much. Uh, I feel not only greatly uh, honored, but shuffled. And well, uh, let, let me say that uh, 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 Ima and, and, and Jose Luis, who's also here, were in, in, called twins uh, in my family. Uh, they were my first children, in a sense. Uh, you said that it was 25 years ago. Yeah, I think you were the two only ones that uh, saw me without a great hair or chauffeur gris. As, uh, Yes. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. I've lost my, my audio. Ah, it says my internet connection is, a sta is unstable. Sorry. Okay, I, I, I was thanking you very warmly and also that you had... Uh, I missed it. I hope it's recorded. That, that, that my name appeared shuffled into your talk, which was a great honor. Well, and, and, and anyway, I have only 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 a very brief question. Um, I think that uh, uh, behind the combinatorics, the homotopical combinatorics that, that you're doing uh, is categorical linear algebra. And in linear algebra, there is a natural passage to dual. Um, this passage to dual from linear algebra, uh, is it reflected anywhere in the yeah. kinds of quality that you described? Absolutely. That's the one that we define. It's the one by the transpose. I mean, the transpose translates when we take cardinalities. In the cases, uh, you can only take cardinalities, of course, in the, if uh, uh, you work with infinity group points, which are uh, like finite enough, like locally finite, uh, which means that they have only finitely many homotopy uh, groups, which are different from zero, and these groups are finite. Then you can take uh, cardinalities. Also for the linear maps, you have cardinalities defined. All this is on our uh, paper of homotopy linear algebra. Now, in this case, you have matrices for these maps, right? And in, the, in, the, in this case, the definition of the transpose is the transpose of linear algebra, right? Now, now, what happens is that, of course, uh, in, in many contexts, duality means another thing. And uh, sometimes the definitions of duality agree or are related or not. But the one we have here is the really old one. Are there any other questions for Ima or comments? I have a question. Sure. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, well, I have two questions, two short questions. So uh, first, um, it is possible to derive uh, antipode formulas from the decomposition space theory? Well, uh, some work uh, for that was done by, by um, uh, a student of uh, Joachim Koch, uh, Louis Carlier. Oh, yeah. Okay. There are a couple of papers published about that. Uh, so also the thing is that, uh, well, uh, also uh, sometimes we have by algebras, sometimes we have whole algebras, right? Okay. Uh, many of the examples that I'm interested in are just by algebras. Okay. But, uh, there are also many examples which are whole algebras. Uh, and my second question is, uh, uh, have, you, have you tried to, to, to obtain the short function basis on the symmetric theory? <laughs> 
Yes, we have spent many, many good afternoons with Andy and, and uh, Joachim uh, working on that, <laughs> but it's not yet. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, any any other question? I, I said it was very much work in progress. So if there are no more questions, let's thank uh, Ima again. Thank you.